All right. Hey guys, welcome back to another DOY creation video. I am Jeanette, AKA Soraya. And before I get started, I always like to give glory, honor, and praise to the Most High Yah. All right, you guys, in this video, you're looking at this beautiful, beautiful uh, crochet bottle wine holder. All right. This is quick and easy to make. So I'm getting ready to share with you guys the supplies you're going to need to create this beautiful crochet bottle winder holder. So let's get started with making one. Let's go. All right, guys. So here are the supplies that you're going to need to uh, create this ball wine, um, wine bottle. I'm using the Yarn B Soft Secret. This is in Chili Red. But you can also use um, whatever brand of yarn you want. You can even use cotton if you would like to. But for this tutorial, this is the Yarn B Soft Secret. This is a medium four weight yarn. It is a four weight yarn. So let's see. Uh, yeah, medium four right there. Also grab your size 5.5 crochet hook, 5.5. You're gonna need a tapestry needle to, you know, just sew in our loose ends, a pair of scissors, and these beads right here, you can use whatever beads you would like. These are optional. These are optional uh, when we do the drawstring. So grab two beads, whatever you have available. I have these in pearl. So if you have all your supplies, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. All right, let's move all that to the side. I have made so many of these. My yarn is kind of... Uh, tangle up. Let's see if I can pull out the center. All right, let's get started by making a slip knot. The way that I make my slip knot is I wrap the yarn around two fingers, go between the two fingers, pull through. There's my slip knot. Let's insert the hook. And we're going to start with a chain of six. We're going to start with chain of six. Let's get together. So I'm going to chain one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to um, close the ring, insert in the first stitch, and let's close the ring by doing a slip stitch. Chain of three, one, two, and three. Inside the ring, put 11 double crochet inside the ring. So that's one double crochet, wrap the yarn around your hook, go inside the ring, pull through, go through two, go through two. So go ahead and put a total of 11 double crochets into that stitch and I'll be right back. Once you have your 11 double crochets into your ring, your first chain three is counted as your first double crochet. So that'll have us a total of 12 double crochet. Go directly on top of the chain three, and we're gonna do a slip stitch to join. You can pull the string to tighten up the hole there. Chain of three, one, two, and three. Go right back into that same stitch, and we're gonna put a double crochet into that same stitch. So we're gonna have two double crochets into the same stitch. Go over to the next stitch and you're gonna put two double crochets into that stitch. So that's one double crochet. Go back into that same stitch and put another double crochet. So we're gonna repeat that all the way around, putting two double crochets into the same stitch and we should have a total of 24 double crochets at the end. I'll see you back at the beginning. All right, guys, so I have made it back to the beginning. I'm gonna do what I did in the previous row, go on top of the chain three and do a slip stitch to join. So you should have a total of 24 double crochets. 
Okay, let's go ahead and move on to row three, chain of three, one, two, and three. And the next stitch, put two double crochets into the same stitch. So that's one double crochet. Go right back into that same stitch and put another double crochet. So we're going to alternate one double crochet into the next stitch. And in the second stitch, we're going to put two double crochets into the same stitch. All right, it looks like I got a yarn barf here. So the next stitch is one double crochet. And then the second stitch is two double crochets together. I want you to repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you back at the beginning. Alternating that. Okay, I'll meet you back at the beginning. All right, I'm coming to the end. So I'm going to end with two double crochets into the same stitch. Go ahead and put my other double crochet. And now we're just going to go on top of the chain three and do a slip stitch to join. All right, so this is the base of our wine bottle. And again, for this part here, we're just going to pull here tightly to close that up. So this is the uh, bottom part of our wine bottle. And now we're just getting ready to do the body of it. And we're going to start off with a chain of four. So one, two, three, and four. You're going to skip the next stitch and put a double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch and put a double crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way around where we just chaining one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch. I will meet you back at the beginning. Okay, I'm coming back to the beginning. So let's chain one, uh, skip one and double crochet into that last stitch. Now I'm going to chain one and slip stitch to join on top of this chain four stitch. Slip it right in. Now we're gonna do 14, a total of 15 rows of this window stitch or mat stitch whichever one you call it. Each row starts off with a chain of four, one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna go directly on top of that bottom double crochet. And we're gonna put a double crochet right on top. Now we're gonna chain one, go on top of that previous double crochet at the bottom chain one and we're going to repeat this all the way around so i'll see you back at the beginning okay i have made it back around chain one and now i'm just going to slip stitch to join as we did from the previous rows so that was row one that was row two of these window or mask stitch you're going to do a total of 15 rows. So the next one is row three, and we're just going to do the repeat. That's one, two, and now I'm on number three of this same mass stitch or window stitch, whichever one you call it. Do that for another 13 rows, and I'll be back once I have a total of 15 rows of the mash or window stitch. Always start with a chain of four. I'll meet you back once my rows are done. All right, guys, so I am back. As you can see, I went 15 rows of the mash or window stitch, whichever one you call it. So once you have completed your 15 rows, like I have, let's find the yarn. Let's move this out of the way. All right, so now we're going to chain three one, two, and three, right in this window right here where you see my finger, this space, we're gonna insert five double crochets. 
So we're doing like a shell stitch. So that's one, go right into that space. Two. Hold on, let me grab some more yarn. That's two. Three. Four and five. So that was five double crochets in that space, but that chain three is counted as our first. So that's like a uh, shell, so that's six double crochets. You're gonna skip the next space, go into the next space, and put six double crochets into that space. So that's one double crochet, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. You're gonna skip the next space, go into the next space, and put six double crochets into that space, and I'll meet you back at the beginning. Okay, I am back, I did my six double crochets, skip a space, and now I'm just gonna go on top of this chain three, and we're gonna do a slip stitch to join. And that give us our nice little shell stitch at the top. Looks really, really pretty. So now, as you can see, you wanna fold your work in half, just like this. Make sure it's flat and is in half. This is the only tricky part right here. We're going to chain, after you did your slip stitch to join, chain 50. One, two, three, four. Go all the way and chain 50. Five, zero. Okay, so once you have chained a total of 50, this is our handle part right here. When you lay your work flat, Go onto the opposite side. This looks like it's the opposite, and we're going to do a slip stitch to join. This is how we're going to hold our handle together. Now, I want you to go ahead and chain one, go into the next stitch right here, and we're gonna do a slip stitch to join. Slip stitch to join. Chain one again. Turn your work around. And this is because we want the work to come out, uh, the handle to come out as evenly as possible. And now we're just gonna do a single crochet all the way across. So go into your chain it could be a little hard on camera. And we're just gonna do a single crochet all the way across. I'm just going into my chain and doing a single crochet. It's a little tricky, take your time and just go into each stitch across. So go ahead and do that. And I'll meet you once I have my single crochets all the way across. All right, so I have made it all the way across. Once you get to a cross, I want you to go into the next stitch and I want you to slip stitch to join, chain one, and I want you to go into the next stitch again and slip stitch to join, okay? This is just giving the work uh, a little bit more security turn your work around and we're gonna go back down this uh, chain handle. So we just keep doing a single crochet all the way down and we're gonna do this for a total of three rows. So this is row two. So once you get down, finish with row two, I'll meet you back. Okay, so you're gonna slip stitch to join. Okay, the next stitch, chain one, Go to the next stitch and do a slip stitch to join. 
because we just want to secure this on as much as possible. Try not to uh, twist your work because it can twist a little. It doesn't look bad if it does twist, but you know, we want to be as uniform as we can. Now I'm just going to go back down this chain one more time. It's a total of three times that I'm going down just to give the thickness of it. If you need to, if you think you need to go another row, you can, but I'm just going to do a total of three times going down. Do you see how that's nice and secured on there? That's why I do the extra slip stitch and going to the next chain. It just holds it up a whole lot better. So go ahead and do your single crochets. I'm sorry, that's kind of twisted. Go ahead and do your single crochets back down this one, and that'll be the end of that. Okay, so I made it back down to the other end. And now I'm going to do what we've been doing is doing a slip stitch. A slip stitch one time. And then I'm going to go to the next one and do another slip stitch. I do it twice because I need it to be very, very secured. I'm going to cut my yarn. And now I can fasten off. Make sure I fasten off. Everybody fasten off is different, but that is my way. So the bag is now complete. If for, an, for any reason your handle twists, it's not a big deal. You can barely tell if it twists or not. But this is our bag. And we can sew in our loose strand, sew in our loose strand here, and then just turn our work here. And we want to make sure we get that loose strand here so we can have that tight. But now we're getting ready to make a drawstring to go around our bag. So to do that, you can you can do your um, sewing in your loose ends off screen. That's what I'm gonna do. But let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna put that to the side for a second. Hold on one second. Okay, on this part here, you're gonna pull your yarn for both sides, both ends. So I pulled the yarn from this end and I grabbed the yarn from the opposite end uh, just, just to make the drawstring a little bit more thicker. Or you can use two skeins of yarn, but I'm grabbing it from both ends and I went on and threaded it. I had to do it off camera because sometimes it's a little difficult to do it on camera. Make sure you have the tapestry needle and the size hook. I mean the size needle that can go inside your bead. So let's see. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and thread both of my beads on here. So that's my first bead I'm sliding on. And then I'm gonna grab my second bead and I'm gonna slide this on my tapestry needle like you see I'm doing here. Just like that. So now I got both of my beads onto my thread. I can go ahead and remove my needle and put that to the side for a second. All right, and now I'm just gonna do a slip knot. I'm doing a slip knot. So go ahead and do your slip knot. This is how I do mine. I'm trying to move some of this yarn back because sometimes looking at too much yarn can be a little confusing. So now I made a slip knot, got my hook on here. I'm going to slide the first bead down. I'm going to move this up. And we're going to chain a total of 75. So I got my bead slid down and now let's go ahead and chain 75. Holding my bead like this. One, two, three, four, Five. And as you can see, my bead is nice and secured. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So go ahead and do a total of 74. When you get to 74, chain, stop. Okay, so I made a total of 74 chain. So I'm going to pull my last bead down, and this would be chain number 75. All right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut my yarn. Cut your yarn long enough so we can uh, tie it up. So let's go ahead and chain, cut that off. All right. 
And now we're going to fasten off just like this. All right, just we want to make sure this is nice and secured. Now, another way to make sure my bead stays secured, I'm just going to make a knot. I'm just going to wrap the yarn around just like I'm doing here. Let's make sure we got both strands. Let's try that again. So you're going to take your, um, wrap it around your finger, your yarn around your finger, bring it through the hoop and pull it down towards the bead. Let's do that one more time because we want to make sure this, this bead is going to stay on, but this is just a little extra security. And I'm just going to pull it down just like that. So that is a double knot to make sure that bead stay right on there. Let's go to the opposite side of the other bead and do the same thing. I'm just going to make a knot, bring it down towards the bead and wrap it around my finger again one more time. And there's my double knot. And let's just cut the yarn. We want to cut it evenly. So we're just going to, oh, there's my tapestry needle just fell. And you're just going to cut this side here along with this side over here. And that's that. Throw that to the side. So there's our knot. There's our bead. And we don't have to worry about that sliding off. You can use um, some glue to, to um, glue this down if you like. Or you can use a uh, burner and burn this to make sure it doesn't go off. But... I'm secure enough that it's not going to go off. So off camera, I went on and sewed in my loose strands, the one that was inside and the one that was on the side. Now we're just getting ready to just go into the center. We're going to the mash part or window of it. So this is how we want this to be straight. So I'm going to go into whatever the middle is. This looks like the middle. I'm just going to go and weave my... Uh, draw strain in so weave it in go into the next space just like you're just weaving in and out all right so let's go ahead and do that and making sure you on the first row i'm just making sure i'm in the first row i'm not into the shells i'm into my my windows all right so let's go ahead and do that weaving in and out All right, so let's, I'm almost at the beginning. Weaving in that way, coming out that way, going in this way. All right, let's pull it a little bit. Let's go into the next one. Go in, come out. Looks like I got this here. So you might have a, let's see, you might have one space open and that's okay. You can go ahead and weave it or you can just leave it. Let's just leave it. So we're just going to make sure our um, handles are even. Let's make it even as possible. So I'm just going to pull it down a little bit more on this side here to match it up on that side. And there you have it. We can just tie a little bow, however you tie your bow. I just go like this and just make a little bow. I'm not the best bow teacher, but one side there, one side over here, and there you have it. So there's our little B. Let's bring that down. And that will conclude our crochet bottle winder. Guys, this is so easy to make and it's so fun to make. It seems a little bit longer when you're doing the tutorial, but I can whip one of these up in 20 or 25 minutes. So let me know what you guys think of the tutorial. I want to say thank you guys so very much 
for uh, doing this tutorial along with me. As you can see, I'm gonna have them in various colors. Have fun with it. If you're on any other social media, please tag me into your video so I can see what colors you choose or chosen to make your ball winder in. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all in our next video. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thanks for watching.